Hi everybody, welcome to Professor Orthodontics, your online classroom to understand orthodontics in simpler terms. Today's lecture is going to be about orthodontic elastics, also called as orthodontic rubber bands. So, let's begin. The main purpose of using elastics in orthodontics is to exert force. Removal orthodontic appliances particularly can be divided into different components. They have active part, passive part, retentive part, and the base plate, which holds the plants together. Now, the active part is the part that produces active force to bring about tooth movement. Today's lecture on orthodontic elastics deals mainly with active part of the appliance. That is the part of the appliance that is producing continuous force. Orthodontic elastics, although almost look the same as our regular elastics, but they are not. These are not the elastics that you use from general stationery and you use to tie your hair or wrap up a packet of open potato chips. These elastics have been tested for medical purpose to make sure that they are inert and they are safe for use in the oral cavity. Another difference between these elastics and the elastics that we use for our day-to-day -day purpose is that these elastics have been scientifically tested. They have been tested in laboratories to make sure they exert a specific amount of force. So, what else can we learn about orthodontic elastics today? The advantage of using orthodontic elastics over other form of active orthodontic force components like springs and screws are these. Orthodontic elastics are cheap, they are easily available, patients find them comfortable to use and they have multiple purposes. The same elastic can be used for different kind of malocclusions. And because these elastics can be handed over to the patient, patient need not come repeatedly every week or every three days to the orthodontist to get the treatment done. That means patient can be handed over some elastics, clearly given all the instructions and the patient can come up after a follow-up of a month or three weeks. There are certain disadvantages associated with the use of orthodontic elastics also. Now, what are the disadvantages? The first and foremost disadvantage is that it depends on patient's compliance. Obviously, if you're handing over these elastics to a patient, it is completely up to the patient to wear them exactly and as instructed by the orthodontist. If the patient does not follow the instructions and does not cooperate, he does not understand and appreciate his role in successfully completing the treatment, you may end up prolonging the treatment. And if he forgets the way to use the elastics, you may end up with irregular forces, hence undesirable tooth movements. Second disadvantage is that these elastics tend to degenerate in the oral cavity. Obviously, there is constant production of saliva, the enzymes in the saliva, the bacteria in the saliva, even the remaining food debris in the oral cavity can damage these elastics and produce foul odor. Patient has to maintain good oral hygiene during the use of these elastics. And another disadvantage is that overuse can result in unequal forces. That is, only for a certain amount of time, orthodontic elastics can be used because unlike springs and screws, orthodontic elastics have a very general and a non-confined force application to make sure that it does not exert undesirable forces because the range of action of the forces is so vast that it can result in undesirable forces. So to avoid that, only for a limited period of time it can be used. It cannot be overused because you may end up with over extrusion of teeth or canteen occlusion and so on. So when and where can we use orthodontic elastics? Orthodontic elastics can be used with removable appliances. It can be used with fixed orthodontic appliances as well. When it comes to fixed orthodontic appliances, 
you have to make sure that a you have a reinforced anchorage in place that is maybe you are using a tpa or a lingual arch or a nans palatal arch but you should have a reinforced anchorage system in place before you start using orthodontic elastics b these elastics should be used only when you have reached the ss stage when you have a rigid heavy stainless steel wire in place only then orthodontic elastics are recommended because if you use these elastics in the presence of night eye wire which already are extremely flexible and resilient you will end up with uneven forces you will end up with loss of arch form you will end up with canton occlusion this is completely undesired and it will end up in prolonging the treatment and round tripping of the treatment which we don't want make sure that you stretch the elastics at least 2 to 3 times their original diameter this is done based on several studies which have proven that pre stretching of elastics decreases the rate of degradation of force that means that when we use orthodontic elastics some amount of force degradation takes place as soon as they are used the ability to produce force decreases slightly so if we pre stretch them apparently the rate of degradation of force is lesser also these elastics degrade in the oral cavity due to enzymes and saliva which we have already discussed so they have to be changed every 24 hours orthodontic elastics can be classified in various ways they can be classified based on their component in the sense latex and latex free elastics obviously these elastics are for those individuals who are latex allergic it can also be classified based on their color some companies manufacture color coded elastics like red blue green and white and so on and then there are other companies that code the elastics with different cartoons here over here we have a picture of a company that fabricates elastics and codes them based on animals so every animal represents a certain amount of force and a certain amount of and a certain specification for diameter the third classification the fourth classification would be classification based on the use so if the use of the elastic is for correction of class 2 or a class 3 malocclusion and so on the classification of the elastic can be class 2 elastics or class 3 elastics so depending on the purpose of the elastics it can be classified this way but the most common and the most useful classification of elastic is based on their diameter and the force that they produce based on the force produced by the elastic they can be classified as light medium heavy and super heavy now how does a single elastic produce such a variation of force a single diameter elastic can be increased in thickness say 1 by 8 inch diameter elastic is available to you it depends on how thick is the elastic the thickness of the elastic will obviously increase the force produced by the elastic these elastics are they are uh, the force produced by these elastics are graded in the metric system of ounces 1 ounce is equal to 28.34 grams this particular diagram is very important over here we can see that the same diameter elastic can produce different amount of force the same 1 by 8 elastic can produce 3.5 ounce of force and if the elastic has a thicker diameter it can produce 5 ounces and further thicker diameter will result in production of 6.5 ounces again this variation in production of the amount of force that it can that is uh, the amount of force produced by these elastics varies from company to company so every company has its own chart of force production and every company has its own gradation of elastics or a class 2 elastic like this can be used remember this classification of class 2 or class 3 elastic is based on its use what we see over here is midline correction elastic again classification based on the use of the elastic 
we can see that no other elastic is used in the arch only elastic is extended from one side canine to the other canine hook this is an example of triangular elastics also called as delta elastics why is it called delta because it looks like the letter the greek letter delta now these elastics are usually used when settling of occlusion is required and some amount of posterior open bite is present such elastics in such cases are used to settle the occlusion they can also be done to close some amount of open bite present in the occlusion during treatment this is an example of box elastics they are used in treating anterior open bite and sometimes they are also given in patients where anterior open bite is already corrected and the maintenance of a closed bite is essential in such cases box elastics can be advised usually it is given in patients who have some amount of tongue thrusting habit this is another example of unilateral use of elastic over here we can see the use of cross bite elastics for correction of cross bite that is the elastic is extending from the buccal tube the buccal hook on the molar to the the hook on the palatal side of the upper molar tube this can also be used as vice versa based on the type of cross bite that is present now we come to use of elastics for extra oral use we know that orthodontic elastics are needed even in the use of orthopedic appliances for example face mask or even headgear we can clearly see that these elastics are not the same as the ones we use for intraoral of course they are of the same medical grade quality but then these elastics have to produce extreme amount of force because they need to be producing orthopedic level of forces so these elastics are usually heavier and they usually come along with the orthopedic appliance as we know that every orthopedic appliance has a specific amount of force range that is needed to produce the orthopedic correction so face mask needs a different amount of force and headgear needs a different amount of force so based on that these elastics are available and they usually they usually come along with the extra oral appliances as we come to the end of the lecture there are a few more things to be kept in mind before we select the elastic first point is that we already know that some amount of force loss will take place as soon as the patient starts using the elastics so why not select an elastic that produces slightly higher amount of force than that we desire so that we can compensate for the force loss that will definitely takes place as soon as the patient starts using them another advice is that when you select the elastic that you are using if you are particularly using 1 by 8 diameter elastic preferably go for the latex elastic or the non latex elastic some study has been done and proven that 1 by 8 diameter latex elastics show some amount of resi resistance to force loss when compared to latex free elastic interestingly they did not find this unique capacity in other diameter elastics so if your patient is not allergic to latex you can stick to using latex elastics when compared to latex free elastics also do remember to reinforce anchorage i cannot emphasize enough on the fact that anchorage loss is a big a big hurdle in use of elastics if you do not reinforce anchorage just like in any other orthodontic correction this will become difficult so if you lose anchorage it's more or less a round tripping you lose space you don't want that so make sure you reinforce anchorage before you start using the elastics so what suggestions can you give to your patients younger patients or patients who have difficulty in getting used to certain instructions you can advise them use of elastic placers some elastic placers are available over here you can see this diagram which represents some are available in the market now these elastics are available elastic placers are available in different colors and different shapes the main purpose is to act as a hook so basically the elastic is first hung on one hook maybe for example patient is asked to use class 2 elastic then patient places the class 2 elastic on the canine hook 
and the free end of the elastic is engaged with the elastic placer and the elastic placer acts as a handle to extend the elastic backwards and engage in the buckle hook of the mandibular molar. This is just one example. It can be used either way. So it acts as a handle and helps the patient place the elastic more comfortably. Do remember to ask patients detailed medical history to check for latex allergy. Do remember that patients tend to forget if specially instructions are of uneven kind. Maybe the patient needs to be placing elastic only on one side and not on, not on the other side. So make sure that the instructions are written. So this helps the patient to help you better. Remember, each patient wants to help us. The patient wants to be the good patient. They want to help us. So they try to do their job, but do educate them on the importance of their cooperation in the success of the treatment and it is preferable to provide written instructions on the use of elastics that means instructions on how often the elastics are to be changed and how to place them which teeth are to be engaged with the elastics have to be clearly mentioned on the form so that's it for today i hope you have learned a thing or two about orthodontic elastics and I hope that this will help you practice orthodontics better. So do remember to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, see you soon.